The night my mom died, I was so much in shock that I believed her soul came back to comfort me in the body of a lightning bug that flew straight into my face. I almost snorted that bug up my nose. I was sniffling. It flew right into the path of my left nostril. I swatted at it and then immediately had this moment where I thought, hey, it's my dead mother telling me to go get a Kleenex. Some people tend to do that, you know, a person we love dies and all of a sudden we start seeing ladybugs everywhere or that person's favorite flower suddenly makes an appearance in the garden. We see these things as the manifestation of our lost loved one. It makes us feel better when we lose someone unexpectedly. We believe that even though we didn't get a chance to say goodbye, they're coming back to us in some small tangible way so that their death wasn't really a goodbye. Maybe snorting that manifestation up your sinus cavity is goodbye, but that earlier part wasn't it. So this connection I made between the lightning bug and my mom wasn't completely out of the blue. I have these great memories of lightning bugs and my mom giving us pickle jars to catch them in the summer evenings when we were kids. And in my state of shock, it just made total sense to me. I didn't know at the time that my mom was actually going to speak to me after her death and she wouldn't need an insect to do it. She died on a Wednesday, and we had the rosary and funeral within just a couple of days. After the service, our immediate family went back to my mom's house for one last family huddle. It was the day before Mother's Day, and my mom had already gotten cards from several of us. I remember looking at the one from me on her mantle thinking, if I knew this was the last card I'd ever send my mom, I would have gone with something more sentimental than Garfield. At one point, we were sitting in the kitchen flipping through her cookbooks. My mom used to like to stick greeting cards and postcards or little handwritten notes in all of her reference books. Sometimes they'd be like little diary entries describing what we did on that holiday or little character studies in the back of a photograph. Liner notes in a recipe book talking about how to tweak something to make it sweeter. Always sweeter, never to cut the calories. I thought I'd just go check her Bible to see what was in there because it seemed like the kind of place my mom would have stuck something. Her Bible is this big, fat, white tome with gold lettering and Caucasian Jesus on the cover. <laughs> you won't find anything in there, my sister said. We already went through it looking for Bible verses for the service. But I flipped open the Bible and there it was, the first thing I saw, an envelope with my mom's handwriting on it that said, Mom's Last Wishes. I looked at my brother who was standing right there with me. His face blanched as I held it up and I said, what the hell is this? <laughs> we grabbed both of my sisters and ran to my mom's bedroom to open the envelope. In it was a sheet of paper with handwritten directives for how she wanted her funeral to go. It read, as for my last wishes, I have a few requests. If my in-laws are still alive, please do not let them do any planning. I want to wear the outfit I wore when Mike and I were married. Please, no big bunch of flowers. I would rather have had those while I could still see them. Just a red rose for each grandchild. I would like a rosary at Memorial Gardens and a mass at Holy Cross Catholic Church. Please do not let anyone sing or play Amazing Grace. <laughs> play on eagle's wings or when the roll is called up yonder, but not Amazing Grace. All in all, we had done amazingly well with the planning, even picking out the right burial dress, but Amazing Grace, it had been the first song in the service. <laughs> because who hates Amazing Grace? <laughs> then, tucked into that larger envelope was a smaller envelope that said, to be read at Rosary. Inside was a two-page note telling each of us in the family how much she cared about and was proud of us. She told us that if we kept her in our hearts, We'd never be alone. Then she thanked us for being a part of her life. Thanked us. Both the letter and the funeral directions were undated, but they were written sometime after my son Rowan was born three years earlier because she mentions him by name with the rest of her grandchildren. My mom had not been sick or in poor health, her death was completely sudden and unexpected. 
As far as we know, she had no reason to think that she needed to write this stuff down and place it where one of us would find it or to look in the event of her death. Of course, it would have been nice to find it a day earlier because that amazing grace thing. <laughs> but I think we found it when we needed to find it, when it was just us, the people who loved her most, on the toughest day that most of us had ever had, when we needed to hear from my mom just one more time that she loved us. It was so much better than a bug. <laughs>